Hi, I'm Jason Bodak for Rampant Design, and welcome to this tutorial on adding lens flares in DaVinci Resolve. Now, for this tutorial, I'll be using version 12.5.1, but this can also be used on any version prior and any going forward. Now, today we're going to be using two stock asset libraries from Rampant Design called Studio Flares 4K and Natural Flares 4K. Studio Flares 4K comes with over 500 different lens flares varying in direction, size, color, you name it. Natural Flares is a personal favorite library of mine containing 87 real lens flares captured by Rampant Design themselves for use on a variety of projects. As you can see here, we have different colors, different parts of the screens are being illuminated. Almost anything you can imagine is in this Natural Flares library. So I highly recommend you check this out if your footage needs a little bit of spicing up. Now I've gone ahead and added two lens flares to my media pool, but just in case if you're not familiar, all you do is you find your media up at the top here, navigating through your folders on the left and drag it right in just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I've already picked out the media flares and added them to my media pool. And we're gonna go ahead and jump into edit. Now, if we take a look at this footage real quick, we have a nice jungle shot of a guy where we don't know where he's coming from and he's walking to somewhere that looks pretty important. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a lens flare from Studio Flares and one from Natural Flares along with the Star Trek Enterprise at the top. Now, I'm sort of joking about the Star Trek Enterprise, but if you've seen any of the recent movies, you'll know that adding a lens flare is perfectly normal for it. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it and see how we can do this. Now, this clip is a little bit boring and I think it can use some spicing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my first natural flare right here. I'm gonna double click it and see what we got. So this is coming from the bottom. We have some interesting bokeh over here. So I'm gonna go ahead, make sure I have an open video and I'm gonna go ahead and drag it right there. Now, if you don't have a video two or video three layer, you can go ahead and right click and add a track right there. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to the length of our video clip and it's now covering up our clip. What are we to do? Click on the flare, go ahead to go to the inspector, and you can choose add, overlay, or screen. For this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and be using screen. Now, I'm not so fond of this being in the lower part of the screen. It's not bad, but it's not exactly where I think light comes from. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the flip control right over here to flip it so it's on the top. Now, if for some reason it's covering over your black bars right here, you can go to timeline, output blanking, and select the correct output blanking. I've gone ahead and matched the source clip over here at 239. Now this is sort of cool, it's adding a little bit of fun to our clip, but I wanna go a little bit further. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the studio flare. This is gonna be fun. And I wanna go ahead and add this to our shot. So make sure we have an open video layer. I'm gonna go ahead and drag our studio flare and check it out real quick. Now, I want it to sort of come on with the flare already on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop the beginning off a little bit. That looks good. Now, similar to the last clip, I'm gonna tighten out the back end and I'm gonna open up the inspector and change our composite mode. Now again, I'm gonna be using screen, but you can also use add or overlay. Unfortunately, it's covering our talent's face a little bit. And while I really love this lens flare, our client is not gonna like this obscuring our talent. So we're gonna do a couple things here. Our footage we're working in is 1080p, while these flares are 4K. We can downsize them, but the real beauty of having stock assets that are larger than your video are that we can zoom, reposition, and flip them in a variety of ways that we normally would see the edges on 1080, uh, 1080 material. So let's go ahead and reposition this. Now you can see the end of our flare right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and go down so I can get it right sort of under our talent's face. Now you can see the edge of our flare right there. That is because DaVinci Resolve resizes all clips to the working resolution, which right now is 1080. But that doesn't mean we don't have full access to the 4K original when we're using zoom, position, and any of the transform features right here. Continue to reposition this a little bit. I'm gonna go there, nope, not quite that far. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reposition a little bit again. And there we go, we have a flare right at the bottom right there. Check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cache real quickly because anytime DaVinci Resolve has multiple composite modes enabled, it automatically uses the 
render cache, which you can set to smart. On a faster, higher powered machine, this will be instantaneous, but even if you don't have the fastest machine in the world, you can still use render cache and it will make everything work perfectly for you. And as soon as that bar is blue, you can go ahead and watch it in real time. Now, this is pretty cool. We have our natural flare up here. We have our studio flare right over here, but something's bothering me about this. Watch as the clip continues towards the end. The camera is actually moving if you take a look at the background. Normally a lens flare when it's natural is gonna be moving a similar amount as well. Maybe not exactly the way the camera is moving, but it's certainly gonna be moving a little bit. Now, I'd like to add a little bit of motion to the studio flare, but aside from keyframing, that's usually not something you can do in DaVinci Resolve as it's really not that much of a compositor. However, I have a quick trick that I'm gonna be able to teach you today that helps you add a little bit of motion inherited from the video two other stock elements that you can composite on your video. So let's go ahead and jump into the color page. I'm gonna go ahead and re-enable clips so we can see our three clips right here. And one of the other things that you can do before we go into moving this lens flare is you can use the variety of color controls inside DaVinci Resolve to adjust these lens flares. Now, I'm not thinking this blue is working well with our clip right here. It seems a little bit too sci-fi-ish for my taste you can make your own decision. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and actually change the color a little bit using our hue controls in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the hue a little bit. Now green's not looking so great, but I like it at an orange. Now this fits in a tiny bit better with our background because we're going for a nice warm sunny day kind of feel. I can do the same for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the hue on this one. And it was a little bit too intense of an orange, so I pushed it a little bit more towards yellow. It was simply just a modification of the hue control right here because each of these are treated as separate clips by DaVinci Resolve before they're composited. Now I'm gonna go ahead and enable loop and let's take a look at this real quickly. Now you can really see how this lens flare doesn't go well over this clip because it doesn't move at all. So we really do need to not only track the shot but move that information over to our lens flare in some way. Now, like I said, this isn't a normal control in DaVinci Resolve, but there's a workaround that we can use to get that. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the playback, and I'm gonna go and select our bottom clip right here. Now you can see I've already done a little bit of tracking over here, and I'm gonna clear that so we can start from scratch. Normally, we use the window tracker. This is when we want to use windows to isolate objects for color correction. Now it has another mode called stabilizer mode. Now you may be saying, we don't want to stabilize the clip. The lens flare is already stabilized. That's what we're trying to fix now. But this is what we can do. We're going to use the stabilizer to track our bottom layer of footage right here. And we're going to take that information and move it over to our lens flare. Now let me show you how we can do that. First, what you want to do is make sure pan, tilt, and rotate are enabled. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck zoom because lens flares don't zoom. Now I'm going to go ahead and track this forward. Now you can see that we have a little bit of a problem here. Not only are we getting tracks from the background, we're getting tracks from our talent as well, which is not only gonna confuse DaVinci Resolve as they're going in different directions, it's not gonna make our lens flare look realistic. I'm gonna go ahead and clear our track data, and I'm gonna turn on interactive mode. Now interactive mode essentially allows us to define or eliminate points to be tracked. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and select our entire screen and go to delete. This is going to delete the points that were automatically put there by DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to insert after clicking on our image right here to eliminate our box. After drawing some areas on the background, whether it's clouds in the sky or trees that are out of focus, just something that DaVinci Resolve can track aside from our talent. Now I'm gonna go ahead and insert points right there and it just added all these points. Draw another box over here and I'm gonna go ahead and insert points. Now this should be enough for DaVinci Resolve to track but just in case, I'm gonna draw another box down here. Now remember, just because the lens flare is on top of our tracking does not mean it's being tracked. These are layered on top of each other and we have the first clip selected. So just gonna see these trees in the background, insert points. Now we have enough points to track from and our talent has no tracking points on his face or his body, track forward. Okay, now that we have our tracking data and go to the three dots right here and copy track data. Notice I didn't hit stabilize on this footage. All we're doing is we're using this to track the background 
We're copying the track data, and now we're gonna go over to our lens flare. Now I'm gonna to go to our three dots again and paste track data. Now I can go ahead and ignore these dots right here. We've gone ahead and tracked our background. We've pasted it on our lens flare. Now here's where the trick comes along. So your strong is normally set at 100. That means that stabilize is gonna do what it says. It's gonna try and stabilize the shot. What we're trying to do is a little bit different. We actually wanna use that tracking data to have it move in the same way as our source footage. Now, what's the opposite of stabilizing? Well, it's technically movement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go minus 100 and click stabilize. Now, it might look like nothing happened. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off interactive mode so we can see our image. But look what's happening to the lens flare. I go ahead and play this. It's actually moving with our footage now. It's actually locked onto our background. And as our camera pans up, the lens flare stays exactly where it should. So essentially, we've gone ahead and locked down our lens flare to react in a way that might be realistic if it were a real flare. Now, this is a little bit intense for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and by going back to the Edit tab, I'm gonna to go to our lens flare, and I'm gonna reduce our opacity a little bit. I go to about 55, 60. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play our clip again. Now just a reminder, if it is running a little bit slow, go ahead and enable Render Cache by going to Playback, Render Cache Smart, and DaVinci Resolve will automatically do some render caching for you. Now you can play this back and let it do that itself, or you can give it a few seconds. If I go ahead and enable our timeline mode, you can see that the blue line indicates where caching has occurred and the red is where it's still working on. Now that our entire line is blue, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our timeline. Real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and stop our footage. I'm gonna turn off clips so we can get a bigger look at this. And let's play this back again. Now, as you can see, we have our two lens flares positioned where we want them to, and we have them tracked with our footage. I look forward to seeing you in the next Rampant Design tutorial. Stay rampant, people.